Good morning, everybody. I'm proud to introduce my wife, Terry Ann Egan, and she's asked me to keep the introduction short. She wants to focus on dementia-friendly Missoula, but I <laughs> have to mention we will be celebrating our 45th anniversary this December, so I'm going to mention that. So. <laughs> but in any case, um, Terry is very active with dementia-friendly Missoula through her role as associate director of the Montana Geriatric Education Center at the University of Montana. She's been in that role for 10 years. So take it away, Terry. Okay, thank you, Ken. And I also want to um, make sure that um, we, we welcome a couple other members of our group. Uh, Rebecca Morley is with Dementia Friendly Missoula and uh, say we are volunteers, uh, have day jobs uh, Rebecca's day job is, is at the uh, Missoula City County Health Department, uh, in, and so she will be uh, joining and, and uh, maybe jumping in and adding things. And then Jim Cook is also a member of our uh, dementia-friendly um, Missoula Coalition, and so uh, he can uh, jump in too if, if he has some, uh, some things that he would like to talk about. Um, what I'd like to do is, is um, go through our, our slides because we do talk a little bit about dementia and about what dementia friendly is. But basically our, our coalition started a, a few years ago, um, about five years ago. Um, and what we're trying to do is at, at this point is reaching out to businesses and organizations that might be interested in finding out more about dementia and um, helping um, people in our community who have dementia and are those of, of um, you who are caregivers of someone with dementia, be a little bit, uh, feel a little bit more um, accepted and um, able to, to work with, with people. We're also looking for employers to, to um, be uh, aware that they have people who are, care, who are caregivers um, for you know, a spouse or a parent or something like that. And there are some business policies so we taper this presentation to um, the kind of organization um, that, that we are um, looking at what sector they are in. Um, recently, we did a presentation for the uh, library staff and opening the new library. You know, and then what we do is we talk about specific things in the environment, like in the library. Do you have you know, restrooms um, that I could take my husband into if I, I need, if he needed help and he had dementia, you know, and so we're looking for family restrooms are not just for people with children, but we're also looking for, you know, there are, are um, other adults that need uh, assistance also. So, um, or if a church uh, uh, wants to be more dementia friendly, how do you do that? And there are some real specific um, ideas for um, churches versus a restaurant. How can a restaurant be? How can the library be, you know, how can a bank be um, dementia friendly? And so we taper this um, to the kind of organization. And what we're looking at today is um, we are recruiting to, um, we had just started rolling this out when COVID hit. And so we've gone to um, a, a virtual presentation like we did for the library and are doing for you and we're doing for some other um, organizations. And what I'd like you to do is think about, is there any place like, do you belong to a church or an organization or some place that may, uh, you know, do you bank somewhere that you think needs to have some help in this area? Then we would be happy to go and do a presentation for businesses. And um, we have a decal that we put on their window that says, you know, dementia friendly Missoula. And that kind of tells you that at least 75% of their staff has, you know, gone through a training and is aware about dementia and how to maybe help um, serve people with dementia as they come into their program. So with that, I don't know if, if uh, Rebecca or Jim have anything to add, I can get started with our presentation. So, all right, I'm going to share my screen with you all. I did want to say, this is Rebecca, 
that with dementia friendly Missoula, it's part of this whole big system that we're looking at now with health equity to assure that everyone um, has a chance to optimize their health. And by being able to interact in our community, it helps improve the health of people with dementia and their caregivers. Okay, thanks Rebecca. So as I said, I'm a volunteer with Dementia Friendly Missoula, um, but I'm also the Associate Director of the Montana Geriatric Education Center at UM. And at the end of this, if you have questions about that, I'm sure you know, I, I can answer some questions, but I'm really passionate about raising awareness of dementia in our community and I'm working with um, to make Missoula a dementia friendly community. So again, as I said, we're recruiting businesses and organizations to receive some training and, and actually uh, receive the dementia friendly Missoula designation. So we were formed in 2015 by a group of, of committed uh, citizens working to raise awareness of and provide support for uh, individuals and families touched with Alzheimer's disease or related dementia. And we are affiliated with the Missoula Aging Services. And so we have include their logo as well. And Missoula Aging Services mission is to promote independence, dignity and health of older adults and those who care for them. So what is dementia? And that's one thing we always, we get a lot of questions about. So dementia is a term, oh, excuse me. I have to get my little picture window up. Dementia is a general term used to describe a decline in cognitive functioning, such as Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive disease of the brain that destroys brain cells causing problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. There's usually three progressive stages of dementia. One is pre-symptomatic, and that can be up to 20 years before we really start seeing really strong symptoms. And then we have mild cognitive impairment, which means that we have, you know, some, some things are a little harder for us as we age, some of our cognitive skills. And then dementia has an early, a middle, and a severe stage. Uh, in severe Alzheimer's, cognition, cognitive and functional abilities decline, failure to communicate and recognize the ones we love, and 24-7 care is needed, and often they are bedridden. So uh, the other big question we get is, well, we hear about Alzheimer's all the time, but my parent has, you know, just ha doesn't have Alzheimer's, they have dementia. Well, dementia is that big umbrella term and it's a general term used to describe a range of symptoms associated with cognitive impairment. Alzheimer's is the most common with 50 to 75% of dementias being the Alzheimer's type. Um, we also have a lot of people that suffer from or, or um, get vascular dementia or Lewy body dementia, frontal temporal dementia. Um, if you know some people with Parkinson's, there's also a Parkinson's associated dementia. So all of those dementias have a similar track, a similar progressive progression of the disease, different types. Some of them will, will um, have a disease that goes in a, in a like a, a decline on, a, on an, uh, a, a very, kind of slow, clear path. Some of the dementias will have a step down. It looks like people are doing pretty well. Then all of a sudden they lose some cognitive skills and then they're doing okay for a while. And then a, you'll see a significant drop. So each kind has some different markers, but they all are dementia and they all have a, a similar um, path or outcome. As Rebecca was saying, Alzheimer's is, it's a public health crisis. We wanna make sure that everyone in our community has the, the ability to uh, live a healthy uh, lifestyle. And one of the things we can focus on is, um, is dementia and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a, one of the top leading causes of death in uh, people 65 and, and older, but it is the only one without a way to prevent, treat, or cure. 
So, however, recent research reports that lifestyle changes may have, uh, that may reduce your risk of dementia, regardless of your genetic risk. And I like to tell people, and especially younger people, that this is what your mom's always told you to do. You know, it, it's, 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 mom's, it's mom's basic advice. You wanna eat a healthy diet, get lots of exercise, keep your mind active, stay connected and engaged, just like the senior forum. This is an excellent idea of keeping your mind active and staying engaged. Check your hearing. And then as far as health wise, we wanna do things like control our blood pressure. We wanna manage our weight, no smoking, get enough sleep and protect your head, especially if you're gonna be out there rollerblading or you know, climbing mountains or things like that. Um, if you're repelling, you need to be wearing head protection. So dementia friendly communities can help address these risk factors. And if we help make a healthy community, and then hopefully what we can do with dementia is um, starve it off that if it happens to us, it happens later in our life. Uh, the burden is large. In Montana, there's over 22,000 people, 65 or older living with Alzheimer's. And this number is set to reach as many as 27,000 by 2025, or about a 23% increase. So why the increase? Our population is aging. And as Montana has, the, the number one risk factor for dementia is age. So the number of us that are living longer, the more possibility there is uh, that dementia uh, will begin. And here in our county, we have about 18,500 people age 65 and older. We know about 11% of those are a little over 2,000 have dementia. And of those people with dementia, about 15% or three, over 300 people are living alone with dementia. So those are the citizens that we're, you know, that we're kind of concerned about, that we want to make sure that we can help bring them into our, our, our community and kind of watch out for our neighbors. We want a dementia-friendly Missoula because life shouldn't end when dementia begins. Dementia-friendly communities are informed, they're safe, they're respectful, foster a quality of life and empower citizens with dementia. Being dementia friendly means that we're able to recognize the signs of dementia, to communicate effectively with people living with dementia, to identify and implement dementia friendly practices, to know where to locate dementia resources and support, and then learn how to support caregivers and the benefits of doing so. So what is important to those living with early stages of dementia? And this is what people in those early stages that are still very cognitively aware, um, they say they want to be involved in their community. They want to continue to um, make plans for their future care. They want to contribute still to the community in, in ways that they can. They want to continue to shop and eat out. Um, they want to connect to family and friends. They want to engage in, in their daily activities. Um, we had one member of our group with early dementia and he was a runner and he, and you know, he wanted to continue running. And so he was doing, you know, the five Ks or 10 Ks. He just had to have someone else kind of with him running so that he, you know, stayed on, on track on the trail and, and ran with, with the group. Um, they, they want to visit places of worship and people say that's really important, you know, with this disease and as they're facing it or facing it with their caregiver or loved ones, they want to continue to be a contributing part of their faith community. And people also want to feel at home in their community. So what are some possible clues of dementia? If you're 
not sure. Um, and we talk about, especially in a business or like at the library, you know, where you have people coming in or a bank, how, how might you, what might give you some clues that perhaps you're working here or working with someone who's having some difficulty? And one of the first things might be if they, if someone seems a bit confused or a bit lost, like it's a familiar place, but it's not, but that familiarity doesn't seem quite right. So um, they might also have difficulty making choices, things that are, should be somewhat easy. Um, do you want, you know, chicken or do you want steak tonight? Those choices can become more difficult. Trying to get the picture of what is chicken, what is steak can be, can be difficult. Um, they might be looking like they're searching for something and, and they can't find it. Speech might become difficult to understand. They might have difficulty handling money. Um, and this is something, especially for people who have always handled the money and, you know, or their, their own finances and things, and maybe we'll start to forget to make a payment or we'll, you know, look at the checkbook and forget how to write a check. Um, they might have difficulty writing or filling out a form and, you know, the basic information, your name, address, phone number. Um, they, they might have difficulty with that. There's a, those are a lot of questions all at one time. And then we talk to people that are in those early stages of dementia and ask them how they feel and what are some barriers to going out into the community and engaging with other people. And things that they talk about are Things like they, they start to get a lack of confidence, like oh, I'm not going to remember the name. I'm not going to remember where I'm supposed to be at one o'clock. And they're, they're worried about being confused or looking confused. Um, there's a stigma or lack of understanding, you know, kind of, oh, look at that poor old woman, you know, there she's confused or crazy or, you know, things like that. People don't want to feel like that. Um, they worry about getting lost, and especially in the early stages when people are still driving. Driving can become very difficult. Um, um, families say that one of the first ways that they know there's some issues is because, you know, mom went out and she called me because she's over, you know, at uh, Walmart on the south side, and we live on the north side, and she doesn't know how to get home. And so those, those kinds of, of things are, are very, that you, and you happens once, then you're know, like, do I wanna go to Safeway again now? Or am I afraid about that? Um, mobility and physical health, people wanna, wanna stay healthy and be healthy. And they, no, nobody wants to be a burden to their family, their friends, their community. Um, external barriers um, are things like um, there's a, a, a lack of support to continue activities. Uh, and people say, well, I, I could do that, but I need that little bit of help. Someone just needs to know that, like with running, our friend that wanted to run, I need to run with someone so I know I'm going to stay with this person so I know I'm in the right place at the right time. Um, sometimes there's a lack of appropriate activities for people to do, um, a lack of adequate transportation to get to places. There can be missing or confusing signage. And when we talk to uh, like the library or a restaurant or a bank, we talk about their signage. What does it look like? How many words? How big is the print? You know, those kinds of things. Um, and, and we talk about some very inexpensive ways to make signage or flooring or colors of rugs or to make that environment more uh, inviting and easier uh, for people. Um, external barriers are also 
you know, that we're not very good at recognizing de dementia yet. So we may just think someone is, you know, being a little bit obnoxious or, or something for us instead of realizing that they're really struggling and they could use some help. And we, a lot of us also have limited knowledge of communication techniques that are helpful. Uh, one of the things we talk about is, um, and especially if you go even to someplace like a, a doctor's office or a bank where you're filling out a form and, you know, driver's bureau, license bureau, here's the form, fill it out. And then you need to stand over there in that line. And then you need to go and do this. And so we give people three or four or five instructions and then say, okay, here it is. And the person is still back on, I have to fill out the form. And then what comes next? And so, you know, what we need to do with people with um, cognitive impairment is it's one thing at a time. We need to get dressed today. You know, do you want to wear the blue shirt or the red shirt? All right, let's put on the shirt. And then let's put on your socks. You know, so it's one, one thing at a time, you're not saying, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna get dressed today, you know, put on the shirt, the pants, the shoes, the socks, and then let's get going. And it's like, that's, that's too much. It's all at one time. They, they've lost you at put on the. So we, we wanna really learn some communication skills and techniques to, to uh, work with people with dementia. Um, reported experiences from people with dementia is they spoke too quickly. Um, it was too loud. Um, people with dementia often don't have a hearing issue, but we, you know, one of the things that, that we all tend to do is, is maybe talk more slow and more loud to people. And, and it's like, these people are yelling at me. Um, and they talk so much, they confuse me. Um, he wouldn't even look me in the eyes. She rushed me and I couldn't think. And that's another thing we hear a lot is, uh, you know, help me to do one thing at a time and, and, and finish that and then do the next and don't rush me. Let me, let me take the time to process. Okay. I need to do that. And there are five steps. Let them have that time and then do the next one. And then people felt that they were treated like they didn't care. So helpful approaches are to make good eye contact, have a friendly smile, slow your speech as needed. One question at a time, like we talked about. Give them time to respond. And I'm a talker and that's really hard for me because I'll, I'll ask questions, if someone doesn't respond, I'll just keep going. So I have to be really careful to ask one question and you kind of hold your breath, you know, for 15 to, to 20 seconds, up to 30 seconds and let the person respond to you. Other things to do is offer help. You can offer, like if you have to have, have a person fill out a form, you know, would you like me to help you, you know, read that to you and I can fill it out or we could do this together. I'll ask the question and then you ask one question at a time. Name, how would you like your name to be written here? Did I spell Terry right? Because there's lots of ways to spell Terry. Did I spell Terry correctly? You know, some things like that. Um, you can try different forms of communication. Sometimes we start to lose that um, verbal. And so uh, we need to um, maybe try some hand gestures, try making a little picture. Um, we wanna reduce distractions if possible um, because all that extra noise around can be very distracting and um, if I'm having a cognitive issue, I need to focus. And so turning off, you know, music with words in it or television, turning down televisions, things like that are, are really helpful if you want it to, to uh, talk with someone. The other thing is to not take things personally. 
And one of the things when we train um, uh, emergency responders and other people that walk into a situation with someone is we talk about, don't take things personally, but also we need to go to their reality. And so, um, you know, we've had experiences with someone wandering down the road looking for their cows and an emergency, an EMS person's gonna, you know, find them or the sheriff finds them. And, you know, Ken is looking for his cows. Well, if I say, Ken, you haven't had cows for 10 years. He is not there with me. I cannot bring him back to my reality. I need to go to Ken's reality. And if he's looking for his cows, because it's time to bring the cows in, I have to go to his reality and say, Ken, you're right. We need to go find the cows. I can help you. Do you want to get in my car and we can go look for your cows? And then once you have someone in the car, you can try some redirection or you can go down the field and look at the cows. Oh, look here, the cows are, and the cows are all in the corral. They're all close, they're all good. So then Ken is okay with that now because his cows, his cows are good. He can see his cows and see that they're where they, they need to be at this time of day. So we really need to embrace the person with dementia's reality. We need to go to them. Um, we need to avoid using a patronizing tone of voice. We need to be kind and be calm and be patient um, and that embrace their reality. That's really a, a, a critical key.